Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, well, we're going to spend a bit of time together this morning, and uh, uh, don't worry, we're actually going to take a break, and I know this is a uh, long, uh, going to be a fairly long webinar, but I want to go through um, a couple things. Uh, so I'll start with the slides here, and um, uh, just our kind of an overview of our agenda today. Uh, the purpose of VLAB, we'll discuss that just briefly. Um, and then the two big things we'll kind of looking at, we'll be looking at is the actual project repository, and uh, and uh, we'll have you actually go ahead and put something into it so you get kind of used to it, and and I, you can answer any questions you might have. And then we'll take a look at um, the actual uh, Central Region Sioux Virtual Lab and some of the forums we have set up. Uh, and uh, where you can put files, and, and then particularly searching. That's a very powerful part of uh, VLAB is the search part. Um, I'd like to, um, before I go any uh, further, just uh, I'd like to welcome uh, John Chattel. He's uh, one of, definitely one of the big uh, VLAB gurus, and he'll be here also uh, for color commentary along the way. Thank you, John, for being here. Sure, my pleasure. Okay, well, let's go to the purpose of uh, VLAB. Um, uh, the biggest one from our perspective is uh, sci science sharing. It's going to be a place where we, all go we are going to put all of our information for, for the Central Region Sioux. So definitely, any there, it's not that we will not have anything on Google, but we'll have everything at a minimum linked back to information there. So it will be one place you can go. Um, also, sharing of different ideas, uh, projects, and, and also the tracking of them. Uh, that'll include uh, the AOP and the Sioux Community Goals. Um, it'll be a way of testing new concepts that come up um, and, uh, and talk about them. And there's many other uses for VLAB uh, that I'm sure over time we'll be adding and uh, we'll find new ways of using it. Okay, so I, what I'm going to do first is just kind of go over the NOAA Projects Repository and uh, just give you a few hints, and then we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, to uh, if you have a, or if you have to make up a project, but if you have a project in your office, um, this will be a good time to actually practice putting one in. So first, uh, we're going to take a look at um, the projects page and. Along the top here on the Sioux Virtual page, there's one. There's a link called Projects up here on the tab, and uh, there's several quick links up here. One goes straight to the the uh, project re repository. There's a link about how to submit a, a project, gives you specific information. Then there's also a link to the user's guide, and that has uh, all the complete information. And then if you're wondering what, what does RTU, R2U and R2A and so on mean, there's an acronyms and there's also a glossary. And then there's a few screen captures uh, that came with it. Uh, one thing you might find helpful is you, especially those of you who have been here for a number of years, uh, we used to, we were collecting all the projects each year and we had them in a spreadsheet and we were reporting that. And uh, basically, that's kind of what we're doing with the project repository is going back to that. And if you want to look at the projects you had entered before, uh, they are actually all still there. So if you uh, want to actually go back and look at uh, all of them from your office, and you know they have your project on the right here on column H is uh, also where you can actually look if you're looking for the names and so forth. So. Uh, there's a whole a GNH, sorry, I just wanted to point that out. So all of those are still in there, and they're also listed uh, uh, by NWS office, by WFO. So if you want to go back and pull some of those out and you're still working on that, on some of those, uh, uh, please go ahead and uh, enter those into the virtual lab. The idea is a bit is to take some of this information and move it into something that's going to be long term and we'll have a little more work on uh, be able to uh, uh, deal with. Um, now w what should kind of go into the project repository? Um, from our, uh, from for Central Region, uh, one, we're going to be entering the Central Region AOP goals. Uh, we'll talk about how to handle that in a moment. Uh, also the Sioux Community Goals, 
that you've been all been working on, and thank you. Been doing a great job this year. Um, any uh, local uh, research to operations, particularly, even though I have art to you, which is is uh, for other uses, and then there's also research to. Uh, oops, I have commercialization. I must have uh, uh, mistyped something here. Anyway, but. Um, uh, these are just some of the things that are to be included into the project repository. Um, down here on the far right is uh, what came out from uh, the NOAA chief scientist and from Louis Uccellini on uh, what we're being asked to do. So that pretty much uh, explains um, the reasons why and, uh, and uh, so forth. And this is pretty much going to be done uh, NOAA-wide. And also, there's a YouTube video here from our uh, last, uh, uh, from a, I think it was a month or so ago, uh, that was done by the VLAB uh, folks. So anyway, so I just wanted to just point out this page. Uh, there's gonna also a forums area where you'll be able to add categories or post questions, and uh, uh, which is post new thread. But we'll 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 talk about the forums a little later. So. Um, so without any further ado, let's um, go ahead and, uh, and take a look at, um, let me go back to full screen here. So I talked a little bit about what goes into this. Yeah, our two, most of everything we'll do will be research to operations. So that, that's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, and I'll explain what that uh, means in a minute. Uh, a general overview um, for central region for the moment, we're going to, we're pretty much trying to restrict it to people in SSD, SUS, and DOES for submitting projects because um, we really don't want everybody in there quite yet. Now, if there's somebody that you would like to help with that, that's fine. Uh, just let me know. Um, but when we get to the page, um, and I don't want to read all of this, but there is an actual uh, toolbar at the top, and add project will be where we start. And also, um, and then once you save a project, there's like five pages of information you put in. And it sounds like five pages sounds like a lot, but it's really not as bad as it might sound at first. Um, but once you do save that project or submit it, um, it is sent to approval uh, in what's called a workflow. And basically, for right now, it goes to Stephen Smith, uh, head of MDL, and uh, he'll be the approve or reject it, but everything we're pretty much going to probably be in a, a, a state of approval at the moment because there's going to be a lot of things coming uh, to him, I'm sure, once we really get cranking on this. So so don't worry about it being approved or not. Uh, but uh, in, in, in the off chance it does, um, you know, get like if it's um, rejected for some reason, uh, even after you put it in, you can still resubmit it later, or or even if it's accepted, you can also go back in and update any of the information as time goes on. Uh, and if, at some point, if you want to actually withdraw your project, you say, "Well, we're just not. Looks like we're just not going to be able to do it, or we're not going to do it any longer." Uh, there is some uh, information on actually withdrawing uh, your project from the uh, repository. So um, there are a couple a couple things to do, and uh, I think the best thing at this point is to uh, uh, go straight into the repository itself, and let's uh, go to that. And when you first get here, you'll notice that there's already quite a list of uh, of uh, projects in here. Um, there's if you come down at the bottom here. Uh, this is just something for you to remember, too, is if you want to see everything, or as many uh, items on a page at a time, you can collect, go all the way up to 75 of these. Uh, and this works across a whole range of things on Virtual Lab. So I'm just going to make it, I say, well, show me, you know, the top 20. And so then it actually displays 20. And then you can actually jump from page to page if you want to go it's page 2, 3, 4 directly. Or you can come over on the right side here and click on Next, or jump to the very last page. So that's very, very handy, because if you have a long list of information you're looking at, sometimes you want to drop, or you want to jump all the way back to the very first page. So 
the first thing we do is uh, we're going to go to add a project. And um, uh, if if you would like to follow along, or like it would be a good idea if you could get to your uh, to the actual project repository page, and uh, you can kind of follow along and uh, put in some information. Even if you're just going to do it as a test, that's fine. Um, just so you get a kind of a feel for how this is doing. So I'll give everybody uh, a minute or so to uh, uh, get uh, connected to the project repository. Okay, everybody pretty much uh, there? Okay, well, hearing sounds like everybody, hopefully you're there by now. First thing you'll do is click on Add a Project. So we're going to click on that. And the first page is very straightforward. You know, what is the name of the project? And uh, I'll just put one in the SSD um, project. So I'm just using this as a test. And then in the next one is you put a description. And, uh, and if you happen to hit return or you, hit, you try to go to the next page, you'll get this red box around it because it is a required field. So if you want to call this is a description. And you can put as, you know, you can actually type quite a bit in there. So uh, it doesn't have to be real long, but, you know, maybe a couple, three sentences or at the most that just so when someone reads it, they get an idea of what you're doing. So once you've put something in there, you can click on the next button, and that'll take you to page two. Now, as you go along up here, if you notice that now this two is highlighted in blue and the other ones are in gray. As we go along and you hit next, we're going to be jumping from the next one to the next one to the next one from left to right. Now, if you get up into here and you're saying, oh, shoot, I forgot to put something in the description, it's very easy. You just click on the number one, and it takes you right back. And then you can make some changes if you like. And then you can just click next if you go into the next one, or you can just click on the number you need to go to next. So I'll click on next. Now, this should normally uh, populate with your uh, name and your email, so those usually should not be a, an issue. You will have to put in your phone number, though. So I'll go ahead and put mine in. Okay, so that's all pretty much there is on this uh, second page for entering a project. Then you click Next. And uh, we'll spend a, a moment on this page because it looks like a lot, but uh, it's actually fairly, uh, you know, most of it will go fairly quickly. The NOAA line office is pretty straightforward. We're, we work for the Net National Weather Service in NOAA, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, project owner organization, the next four of these, uh, we're going to have you just go ahead, hang on a second, go ahead and choose DOC, NOAA, NWS, CR. Okay, so it's right underneath Alaska region before Eastern region. Just click that and go down and choose it for each one of those. So for now, that's, that's all we're going to have you do. Uh, we can always change these later, but this will be the simplest way for you to deal with this at the moment. So uh, no, no big... No big uh, things there. It's just those four. You can just you can just do them exactly the same. DOC, NOAA, NWS, CR for Central Region. Hey John, are we always going to do that for stuff that's at least regional or local based? Yes, we will always do that if it's for regional or local based. For now. Now, it, now, if it's going to be something for something higher up or different or involves another organization eventually, uh, we, we may, we'll have to look at exactly what we wanted to do, what to do with that. But since this is kind of the uh, 
you know, version one of the projects that we're doing, uh, we would want to keep it fairly simple at this point and pretty straightforward. But yes, for now, but eventually, yes, as you noticed in the, in the drop down, there's many, many different uh, people that are in here and, and the definitions for all of these, uh, I, I can show you the definitions, but for the moment, uh, we're, we're the ones that are going to, Central Region is going to be the project owner uh, the re and the resource, excuse me, research and development will come from us for the moment. And, uh, and then whoever's going to be our partner um, is uh, going to, it be, it's going to be us for right now and also uh, applying. So those will all just remain ours at the moment. Now, if we want to see what those are, let's uh, let's go to the user's guide here, and um, we had submitting projects. Let's see. Let's go down and uh, okay. So okay. So let's see if we can find find it here. Okay. So project owner organization is the organization of the project owner so that would be us and then the organization that is the source of the science or technology content that is the basis for it would be us anything regional and local for sure and then for the transition partner or as we they call it the sending organization this is the prime organization responsible for taking your, let's say, taking whatever you did in your research and development or research operations and actually um, uh, for transitioning it to the applying organization. So uh, the transition partner can be the same as the R&D source organization, but um, that's just a little bit of a difference in, in, uh, in thought there on that. And then, um, let's see if I can find it here. <laughs> And at the top here, where it says applying, receiving, this is um, this is actually the organization responsible for actually applying it to operations. Um, uh, it's typically the one that has the prime responsibility for maintaining the operational system. So for now, we're not going to get too much in it because most of what we're doing is not going to be uh, high level. But um, a lot of things we could do would eventually, you know, there may be another organization within NOAA and the Weather Service, particularly that we would have to turn a project over to actually implement it, as it were, or to make it operational. So that that's kind of what those those four uh, uh, look like, or explanations for those four uh, areas here. Uh, the next one is usually going to be R to O for everything we do, research to operations. So that, that'll be fairly uh, straightforward. Target system, you know, take a, just a moment here. If, if for the moment, if it's an AOP goal that we're not too sure about or it's a Sioux community goal, um, you know, in this list here, you can see that there's a whole gaggle of different things. It could be GOES-R. So if you're working something with GOES-R, it could be that. Um, uh, but there is one called not yet determined, <laughs> and I'd recommend uh, on a lot of things if you're not sure at all, you know how it should fit in. Uh, definitely click on not yet determined, which is fine. There's no problem with that at all. Um, if ha if it's related to the 88D, that's uh, something that we you could select as a target system. Uh, a whips maybe one if you're working on something with a whips on a project. Uh, that may be your target, uh, your target. But for right now, as it were, a system that you're going to be working this for. But for right now, uh, sometimes, you know, you notice that sometimes we've, uh, you know, some of the goals have been like, okay, let's put out a, a training outline or a training plan or something like that. Well, these are plans or a list of requirements. Obviously, there's not a necessarily a system per se um, uh, because this, inf this whole way that we're doing this was kind of lifted out of NASA and some other organizations that are used to building things, <laughs> as it were. And, um, and right now, uh, you know, 
not everything we do is actually a deliverable. In other words, something that we're actually uh, uh, going to deliver hardware, as it were, or even a software. So most of the time, you'll probably see not yet determined, and maybe a WIPs or A88D, possibly in some cases. Now under TRL, and this is the one that'll everybody will go. Oh, I don't know what this really means, and this is where you can see the uh, the uh, influence of project management here, particularly the first couple here. And I'm going to jump to a slide for just a moment. Um, let me just uh, go down a slide or two here, so to kind of explain. Um, here we go. Um, the TRL um, is um, pop back here for a minute. It's a required. It's a required field. And um, excuse me a second here. Let me get. And I want to just define what TRL is. It's the project's technical readiness level. Okay, and you're going, gosh, what is, what is that? Well, uh, let me just bring up the, 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 the glossary here, and we'll go down here to it. And this expa explains that there's different levels of projects as they're going along. Um, and most things we do are probably going to start out at the TRL 1. Um, or a concept that's being thought of or formulated. Um, this is kind of the ideas level more than anything. And then as we go along, um, excuse me a second here. So that's kind of the research. One or two is typically would be the research area. Anything from three to four will be, let's say, let's say, okay, you've kind of done the background work and so forth, but you're actually developing something right now. And so you could select anything three through five. That's kind of a generic area. And, and if you have questions about that, um, we're all learning about this part of it. So don't be too surprised if you go, I just don't know. And that's fine. Just, just ask and we'll all figure it out together. Um, if you've gotten to a point where it's been developed and you want to go into kind of a demonstration phase, um, you know, that would be six to eight. And, uh, and that's something you actually have, you know, kind of worked on and want to look at. And then when we get to nine, that's when it's actually being implemented or, or it's in an operational transition. Now, you know, now as we go along here, like we said, if, if we've been doing like a training plan, um, it's, you know, you might say, well, are we transitioning it? Well, you can go to a nine if you know if you say, "Gosh, we're done. We've sent it out. People are imp it's being implemented." Uh, you can actually then go in and edit this after you've put the project in and say, "Yeah, we're at a nine and we're done and uh, we've completed it." So, uh, so anyway, but that just gives you a little sense. Don't spend a whole lot of time, but just kind of use this. Just as one to two is research, three to five development, six to eight demonstration, and nine. It's being put out and being deployed, and or it's being uh, implemented in the field. So it may be a little uh, confusing at first what to do with that, but um, let's just say you know, let's just say I'm thinking of it, you know, what to do. So here's kind of the research end. So the concept or applications being formulated. So I don't don't get too worked up about this. Uh, just just ask if you need help uh, with that. Hey, John, this is uh, John Chattel. Yeah, John, I was about to ask you, John, if you could comment a little more on that, too. I was just going to say, um, before you leave this page, uh, you might want to let uh, attendees know that there's a little bubble to the a balloon to the right of the uh, field name in a lot of cases. Oh, thank if you. Hover you. Over that, if you hover over that, particularly for like um, the various organizations, uh, it will give you the, basically that same information that uh, is available in the user's guide. So you don't have to go uh, looking for that uh, material in the user's guide. It would be right there at your fingertips. Yes, thank you, John. I, I appreciate that, sure. uh, pointing that out. I had missed that. But so anyway, but yeah, that is a handy way if you want to know right away uh, what you're looking at. It gives you a real quick uh, look. 
Okay, so we're we're on page three. So we're we're this is this is probably going to be the the that might seem like the trickiest of the all the pages. So if we go to page four. This is where you have a transition plan, and um, usually most of the time we don't have a plan per se. Uh, but this could be also um, so when you're first starting a project, it may be no. You know, you don't have anything right now. Um, so, you know, you don't have any documents written and so forth. Uh, but as you go along through the project, let's say you're in the draft phase, um, you could go to pending, for example. And then when you're all completed, you can say, yes, our plan is done, our document, whatever it would have to be. And uh, you can change that to yes. So that'll be towards, you know, when you're actually done with the, a particular goal or project. But let's just say no, but we're just starting out. Now, here is, it says, no transition date. Now, a lot of times for us, um, you know, we have, we will say, gosh, we got to get something done quarter four, or we got to get quarter three, and so forth. Uh, you can leave this checked for no transition date. Uh, but usually if we have some type of date, you can actually put it in here. And you, when you click in here, you get a little drop-down box here. And, um, you know, we, if we're thinking, gosh, it's, it's going to be at the end of the fiscal year, um, you know, just, you can click on September 30th. So that's just to give you an, so we can put a date, kind of a, a, kind of a, a, a due date, if you want to say, look at it uh, from that perspective. And, um, and if you do have a transition plan, we said no here, but let's say you have pending and you say, gosh, I do have a draft. You can click on this here and actually click on Choose File. So when you click on Choose File, I want you to see that, see this here for a minute. You can go into wherever your documents have to happen to be. And um, let me just open up one just to give an example. As soon as you click on OK, you'll see that the name of your file you've chosen is in here. Now, at the moment, until until you save this and submit it, um, it's it's not really going to upload it yet. So you have to kind of so don't as you're like, boy, that was awful fast. Well, it was fast. So let's say you could do next. So I'm going to go back to four just so you can see it, but it's still there. And um, uh, John, can you actually load more than one file? I didn't try that on this. Or is it just a single file right now? I think it's single. Okay, so you can only have one transition plan. Right. Um, but there's also the ability in step six, I believe it is, which isn't displaying at the moment. But you can add additional documentation. Um, and, and sort of that's uh, fairly unlimited in terms of the number of files that you can upload associated with that particular project. Okay, thank you. So the answer is... Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'll leave that there for the moment and click next. And then uh, this is, um, and John, you can also chime in as we go along here too, but this is categorization. And you will see this throughout the, uh, the VLAB, but also in our central region Sioux uh, VLAB pages too. And usually, there's different goals. There's no strategic goals. In other words, whatever you're doing, what does that relate to from a no strategic goal level? And it's the same thing for NWS strategic objectives and NWS topics. Well, let's take a look at what these actually are. I know this looks kind of tiny on your screen, unfortunately, but uh, let's see if I can zoom it up a little bit. And you can see here there's four main strategic goals in NOAA, climate adaptation and mitigation, healthy oceans, resilient coastal communities and economies, and of course the one that you'll see most of the time for the National Weather Service would be Weather Ready Nation. So that's pretty much the one you'll always be selecting uh, from the National Weather Service from our side from Central Region. So all you got to do is click in the little box there, okay, and and then when you're done with that, click on the X in the corner to clear that. And you'll notice here that it shows up like a, it's like a tag, basically, uh, right above, right underneath the NOAA Strategic Goals section. Now, if you go down to the NWS Strategic Goals and click on OK, 
uh, you can see there's a number of them here. Uh, enhanced climate services, water, forecasting services, hydrology. Uh, a particular sector, let's say it's agriculture, for example, it could be anything. Uh, water, uh, be up here would be water quality. But let me show you something here is if you say, gosh, you know, uh, it is kind of water quality, but it's also hydrology, you can click more than one. So you can select more than one. So don't, don't be too concerned about uh, clicking more than one. Um, also improved weather decision services and integrated environmental forecast services for healthy communities and systems and sustain a highly skilled professional uh, workforce. Many times a lot of the work we're going to be doing in Central Region typically will obviously be to improve weather decision services and also sustain a highly skilled professional workforce. So because a lot of what we do is training and, and uh, work in that area. So that's something we definitely you know, want to, uh, you know, most of the time these will be two you may want to select. If it has to do with climate or water or if it's specific, you know, very specific area working in, like I said, uh, you can also click uh, improve sector relevant information. And then just click the X again in the upper right hand corner that closes it. And then you can see that the three I selected are listed here. And then under NWS topics, um, there's a whole gaggle <laughs> list of them here. Uh, so many, uh, sometimes you can actually search for if you want to look for a particular one. Um, but as we go through here, uh, it's just kind of an A through W sort of thing. There's winter weather, verification, severe weather, uh, you know, probabilistic type forecasting, uh, hydrology, marine weather, heat. And if you see some that's not on any of these lists, particularly this one, uh, you know, let me know and we can, we can get it added to the list. But here's decision support services, fire weather, uh, forecast warning techniques, or some new technologies you're working on. I know some offices, uh, uh, particularly, uh, um, I know Mike Dutter, you've had things with lake effect snow. Uh, John over in Indianapolis, you had the, the equipment they had there also. That might be uh, something that you, you know, might be able to add in there and, uh, and might be something you can actually pick from a, a technology's point of view. So I'll just, I'm just going to pick some randomly, probabilistic and uh, satellite, and it replies to severe weather. So this is also one of those cases where you can do multiple ones and then close that. So we've selected all of our goals from the NOAA to the NWS strategic and then specific topics. And these are all used to actually tag your project. So if someone says, gosh, what have we done to improve weather decision services? They can search on improved weather decision services. And actually, we can list out everything anybody could, um, including yourself. Uh, or what has somebody been doing in the satellite area? I'm looking for some. Well, you could search on satellite and that information uh, your project will come up because it's been tagged with satellite. Now, of course, many times you may say, gosh, you know, that doesn't really cover everything. So you can, you can also put additional tags in here. I mean, there's anything you can put. Uh, I'm just going to do this just for the heck of it. I mean, you can put SSD, because that's Scientific Services Division. And to add it, um, as you t after you type, just hit Return. So I'll just do like CR for central region and hit return, even though I said acoustic criteria. If you need to get rid of it, all you have to do is hit the X or backspace over it. Um, it'll also give you suggestions if you, if you like. And, uh, and the suggestions list, though, unfortunately, can get rather lengthy because everybody and their cousins put in many different tab tags. So I wouldn't spend the time worrying about that too much. But put anything, something you would like uh, in it. So I'm going to uh, kind of uh, go back out again here to the full page so you can see everything. So we're on the very last page here. And um, this is where you can actually click on Save. And at this point, if you need to go back and check anything, you can uh, on any of the pages by clicking on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then when you think everything's pretty much done. And you know, always can go back later and edit it. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, it's, 
not like a one time and you never can get back to it again. Then click on save. And this is where it's basically being uh, entered into the database. And once it does that, it puts you right back ready to enter a new project again. So you're saying, well, okay, I'll put more in and you can start over again. Or you can just click the back arrow and you'll see this in a lot of, of the forums, files, other pages in here. Always kind of look up above here and if you want to go back to what you where you were at previously, this will take you back to the list. And when you first put it in, you'll notice that here it is on the very first line. And the status is pending. So it's going to be pending because it hasn't been quote unquote approved. Once it's approved, uh, it goes to active. And I, like I said, don't, don't worry about that right now. It's not going to be a problem. Over to the right here, and this is another area to watch for. You'll see it all over VLAB. There's a little down arrow. It allows you to actually view the project. You can go back and edit it again. And actually then you can, I think, uh, John, this must be where you can add the attachments if I remember right. And yeah. uh, you can upload various files here. So to get back out of it, just hit the little back blue arrow. Um, also, you can look at the TRL history. So how, how have things, you know, we started out at 2 on this date, and then if you updated it to, let's say, 6, it'll give you that. So you kind of see how the project's developed over time. So I'm going to stop right there and, um, and uh, ask if there's any questions. Or if you'd like to take a minute to try some things yourself and ask questions, or I can, you know, share my screen with you and and uh, and help you too. So, hey John, could you go back to the, I guess the transition plan step four of that? I had to step away, and the time I got back, you had already uh, skipped past. I'm sure it's easy enough, but I just wanted to make sure I understood what to do there. Oh sure, sure. Here I'll just go to I'll just go to. Uh, let me find my project here. I'll just type search for SSD. And there's the SSD project. So I'll go back in and just edit it. Okay, so for, oh, transition plan. Okay, sure, sure, no problem. Um, there's basically three things here. One is transition plan. And, uh, and usually when you're first starting out on a project, you probably may not have any documents yet with it. You know, so that would just be a no. Don't get too hung up where it says transition plan. Um, for us, for like AOP goals, Sioux Community Goals and some things, we're going to be talking more about, um, you know, the, the draft documents along the way. And let's say you do get a draft document, like it's a training plan or requirements for something or whatever. Uh, you can do pending. And if you do pending, uh, then, uh, then you can actually get down here where it says, Add, re-add, transition, and let me let me zoom that up so you can see that a little better. Add, re-add, transition plan. This is where you would attach it, where the little thing here is. You just would click on uh, add, re-add, and you would choose a file. Now I already uploaded one here, and um, and if I if I want to get rid of it, I can also click on move to the recycle bin. It's a little trash can there, and this is where you would just choose your file and. Um, I'll just pick uh, a uh, document. So it's not being uploaded yet, but uh, it will. So if you put it pending, you can put add a file down here. And at the end of the project, you could go to yes, and then put your final you know, project document in there, whatever it happens to be. Um, also, um, you in the middle part here, I kind of skipped over that because these are kind of tied together. But I just wanted to show you this is kind of the date you expect to finish your project. Um, and a lot of times with AOP goals for us or the Sioux community goals, um, you just click into that space and then you pick, you know, usually we go by quarter more or less, but, you know, you can say June 30th, uh, that would be the end of the third quarter. And then um, at this point, then you can go to the next. So uh, I'll, I'll stop here for a minute, see if you have any questions. Uh, Lou, thanks, John. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, I just want to make sure you, you got it. Yeah, I was just curious because I was thinking, well, early on in a project, you may not have a, 
a transition date, and I wasn't quite sure what to do there. But that makes sense that early on yeah. you could put no and then move move that uh, eventually to pending or, or yes. So. Yeah, and and then uh, here, though, is if you don't have a date yet, you just don't know, just click on no transition date. And that's what it defaults to when you come in when you're doing a new project. It says no transition date. So, and that's fine. I mean, you know, initially when you're doing something, obviously, even if it's a thought or an idea, something you observed you want to do, possibly, obviously there's no transition date. I was just saying is you have to click that off and then select your date. And that would only be typically for things you know that you're going to be able to get done by a certain date. But it's not required by any stretch of the imagination for most things you probably will put in that are brand new or just new ideas. One thing I just wanted to note, if I want you to see that, you notice that um, when I switched the transition plan, it put the new one in there and, and kicked out the prior one that I had put. So you can only have one transition plan at a time, but you can go over here to add attachments. And of course, up here, if you want to find your project, you know, just put in anything, you know, that might you might think might have something to do with your project or a project you're looking for. Um, you can also do advanced search, and this was in the video too, so um, that uh, John et al. Uh, put together. And you can put different things in here too. So if you just want to see, gosh, just show me all weather service information, uh, that's fine, or f from what other, what are, any of the categories that are up here. So I won't spend too much time with that. but. Um, just notice that it does have an all and an any. So an all is and, 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 and then an any would be this or this or this along the way. Okay, so any... any John, this is uh, Mike Aberdeen. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I had, a, I had a step away, too. I just had a question. I was I went through and I did kind of a test one as you were, as you were going through. And mm -hmm. I had a step away at the end. So after I hit save, my status says pending... So what happens? Does someone approve that? Is is that what happens at the end of it, or how does that work? Yes, and and typically, it right now they're pretty much just being approved, because uh, the idea is eventually is for the workflow, as it were, the approval process just goes to one person, Stephen Smith at MDL right now, uh, because this is kind of like version one of the the, the repository. In the future, as we go and as we build this out even more. The idea is to change the workflow and how we change it. I'm not, sure, you know, how it's going to go, but my guess is for projects like with that are uh, like, oh, let's say AOP goals or something very specific to your local area or or to uh, region. My guess is it'll some the approval will probably come through us first, uh, maybe Jeff, let's say, or but that's still to be worked out. But I'm I'm just saying for right now it's just Stephen Smith at MDL. But like I said, they, they should typically just be approved. There shouldn't be any uh, any issues with that. Okay, that makes sense. And then I said I did a, a fake one, and I how do you delete a fake one, or do they have to do that? I have it as ABR test. I went over to that far right hand arrow, and I can't. I don't. I, I don't see a way to delete it. Okay, I don't know if you John, would you like to take that one? Go to the user guide. If you go to the user's guide, there's a section for deleting projects. And that might be the easiest way. There we go. Yeah, I, I went to that, John, and it, it looked like it said go to the far right arrow there, unless I looked at it wrong. The, the arrow on the right hand, and it says select delete. Under pending, I don't yes. see where it, where you can delete it. Check hmm. yours, John. Yes, yes. That's, that's true. I, I, uh, huh. How a trick? Uh, go ahead and try edit, John. Yeah, I'm, that's, edit, what I'm, uh, that's what I'm thinking, too. That's what I was thinking. Let's see if, it's, uh, if you can do it from there. No. Nope, it's not there. That's an that's uh that's odd because originally that was the way it was designed. Um, we'll have to look into that for you. Um, what, Maybe it has to be approved first, and then you can delete it. I don't know. Yeah, mine says pending, like John's. Yeah. I maybe that's why I asked about the pending part. Maybe it has to be approved first or something, and then then but, the delete but, but, label. Yeah. But, the uh, the initial. Once it's approved, uh, it's a it's a more complicated process to delete. In other words, um, you know, uh, I guess you would have to ask an admin to do that part of it. But it should be something you can delete until it's been uh, approved. So that, I think there's a, maybe a deficiency in the software at this point, and 
I'll have to kind of figure out what uh, maybe they've redesigned it, but um, it should have been something you could delete right there. Many times I'm finding, uh, uh, Mike and others, that um, it is a permissions issue a lot of times, the way something is set up, because everything on VLab, um, you know, if you're the owner of a site, uh, you can you can get pretty fine in you know what you can allow different people to do and what to see and so forth. So possibly that's I don't you know it's a good question, but yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, if you see something John? like that, let us know. Yes, sir. John, this is Jeff at yes. IWX. Yeah. Um, I have an active project on there, and if you go into the edit mode, you're able to switch the status from active to terminated. That's about all I can find as far as removing a project. Oh, okay. So you, you, yeah. I think you have to probably be the the owner, is my guess. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for letting me know that. Because a lot of times, yeah, I I think that might be how I got rid of one the other day. Come to think of it, because I put one in. Okay. Well. Everybody, um, uh, I'm going to stay around, but why don't we take a five-minute uh, break and uh, reconvene at the uh, top of the hour. But I'll be here if you have any questions. I have a question, John. Sure. Go ahead, John. Uh, what if it's not our project? I mean, we're doing it on behalf of someone here. Does anything different happen? Uh, no, not right now. Are you talking about as far as the, the approval process or anything? Yeah, I mean, I suppose John Doe is doing it. Do we enter his name and uh, email address, or we, do we stick with ours? Oh, I would stick with yours for right now. Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Now, anybody can go in. I mean, once you're once you've logged in to the virtual lab, anybody could do it. So, I mean, you know, if someone says, "Gosh, you mind if I go in and do that?" Yeah, if they would, if if it's not a problem for you, but uh, we would prefer if we keep it to the uh, those in SSD and the SUs and those for right now. It'll just be easier to track some of this at the moment. Okay. 